So the resurrection story is in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, And all four of those Gospels agree on a couple of things, that Jesus died on Good Friday and that he was raised on Easter morning, and that the women got there first. They all agree on that. And then the details are all over the place, much like with the Christmas story, which is different in different Gospels. And so this morning, we have the story from Matthew's Gospel. And you got to love the details. Matthew's Gospel is the only one that talks about how the stone got rolled away. In the other Gospels, when the women get there, the stone's already rolled away. But in Matthew's Gospel, there's an earthquake And an angel comes down from heaven and rolls the stone away and sits on it, as if to say, there. Yeah, just like that. (laughs) I love that detail. And I always wonder, might this have been Gabriel, the same angel who came to tell Mary that she was going to have this baby boy? How satisfying for Gabriel at the other end of this story, to roll away the stone and sit on it there. We read a poet this week who said the angels sat its angelic bottom (laughs) on the stone and maybe had a sandwich. (laughs) That's right. Uh, So there. Like it's the most ordinary thing in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Matthew's is the only gospel with an earthquake. Um, I've only, I've, I've never been in an earthquake before, I've, but we've both been through some, some tremors. Uh, the last one we experienced was when we were pastoring in Montpelier, Vermont, about a million years ago. And it was early in the morning, and I was in the kitchen, and the house started going, womp, 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 womp. And I was thinking the only thing my brain could conceive was the washing machine must be unbalanced downstairs. And I got down the stairs, and the washing machine was off, and I realized I didn't turn it on anyway. And then I realized we've got an earthquake, and just about the time I was ready to go outside and watch what was happening, it was over. I missed it, worrying about laundry. Uh, Thankfully, there was no damage to the house or anywhere in Montpelier. Uh, It didn't change anything, except my bemusement at being more concerned about laundry than the earthquake. And we realize, of course, as we speak about earthquakes this morning, that sometimes earthquakes are horrible destruction. And we've had that, most, that example most recently in Turkey and in Syria, but that's only one of a long string of events like that. We're not for a moment minimizing any of that horror and pain and death. This morning, though, we want to also suggest that sometimes earthquakes can change things for good. For good meaning... Permanently, or for good meaning, positive, happy good? I would say both. Okay. And you're talking about more emotional yeah. earthquakes. Sometimes. <laughs> right. So we'll give you a couple of examples. Um, one example of a tremor in my life would have been my very first year of seminary here at Boston University School of Theology. And I remember well sitting in a large lecture hall and seeing another student come in through the door on the other end of the hall. And he was wearing a maroon shark skin jacket and a Panama fedora and just had an air about him. (laughs) And I thought, huh, I should get to know that guy. And now, 35 years of marriage later, We're still here. I did not, it was not an earthquake, it was a tremor. And it was. Wait. (laughs) It was a tremor that ended up becoming an earthquake in many ways that changed my life. Earthquake of love. Indelibly for good. That's right. Absolutely. So that's the kind of, that's one kind of earthquake we're talking about. We had uh, a more dramatic earthquake than that 
in our lives uh, about 16 years ago. Uh, <clears throat> Barb somehow took a header off a cliff in Gloucester at her Catholic retreat center and ended up being airlifted to Beth Israel Hospital with her organs all shutting down after a traumatic brain injury. Uh, she was in an induced coma for a week, and we didn't know whether she was going to come back or not. Uh, that was an earthquake that shook up our life. Uh, we kind of divide our life into pre, pre-TBI and post-TBI. Uh, and Barb recovered unbelievably. Thank God every day for that. Uh, but that was an earthquake that shook things up, shook up our family, shook up the conference, shook up so much. And it broke stuff. That didn't get unbroken. That did not get right. unbroken. And yet over the years, has transformed us as a couple, as a family, for good. Meaning permanently and, <laughs> yeah, and, and, positive. and for po- positive. Though it took a while. You know, I remember visiting a spiritual director that I saw about a year after my head injury. And she said to me, so do you think that you could think about this head injury as a positive thing in your life? And I said, No. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I can't because I was still so caught up in all the things that had broken that weren't going to come back, right? It was about five years out before I started to really settle into the gifts, into the good that has come out of that traumatic earthquake in our lives. And you all have had earthquake experiences too. Earthquakes of addiction and as big an earthquake of recovery from addiction. Earthquakes of being laid off, earthquakes of violence and trauma and accident. Earthquakes of the doctor who has a stern look on their face as they come to give you news. Sometimes we get buried in the rubble of those earthquakes. We get buried in that tomb Sometimes for us, Holy Saturday lasts for a long time. Sometimes we're there for years. As a society, as a planet, we are just coming out of the earthquake and the aftershocks of COVID. Yeah, who would have thought it would be three years in? Right. Yeah, three years in the COVID tomb. Uh, right. And COVID also exacerbated so many other earthquakes that we struggle with globally and in our own nation. The ongoing tremors and earthquakes of, of racism and poverty and who has and who has not resources to work with something like and through something like COVID. And I feel as though there's rumblings of of a different kind of earthquake going on right Mm -hmm. now in that there there are ways in which we're being asked to really reckon with our history as a country of 250 years of slavery and the ongoing racism and inequality of that. And even as we're starting to deal with that more and more, there are other folk who are trying to shut that earthquake down so that it won't be spoken about. And that ends up causing more aftershocks of destruction and confusion and oppression. The people who push back against that, that earthquake of, of awareness, uh, right. I think if we, we just tell everyone to don't say gay or, or, right. or ban books about the experience of being black in America or... or, or making drag illegal. Right. Good luck with that. Because you can't put an earthquake back in the box. Mm -hmm. You can't go back to what it was before. You have to live with it and with its effects. We're never the same. Even if we resist the change, we don't get to go back to pre-earthquake. 
and we're not called to be pushing back on justice and equality and love. Earthquakes, whether they're cultural or emotional or geologic, change us, not just the landscape. Earthquakes shake us up, even the good ones. We lose our bearings. We're not sure where we are. Sometimes we're not sure who we are anymore if we've really changed inside. There's no going back from an earthquake. It's like the angel sitting his angelic bottom on the stone. Boom! We are here now. This is a new reality. And it must be lived through. It can't be avoided by going under or over or around. We can't deny it. We can't walk away from it. And whether we asked for it or not, it's here. We can't go back. We're just going to have to deal with what is. It's resurrection time, man. That's my own translation of the Matthew angel there. Uh, But resurrection isn't easy to grasp. It's not our regular experience. And oftentimes it's not even welcome. We don't know what to do with the dead when they arise. Just check out a zombie movie. It's too weird. It's too strange. It's too scary. So I think it's no accident that the first thing the angel says to the women is, don't be afraid. Because of course they're afraid. And I can't even imagine how torn they must have been in the, on the one hand, the solid knowledge that when one is dead, one is dead. And they've been mourning that for three days now. And then the other part of their hearts, which must have been ready to explode with joy. You, you mean he's alive? That can't be. How, what are we supposed to do with this? It's crazy. Jesus says the same thing that the angel says. Don't be afraid. Believe this good news, even though... It's impossible. God works good out of everything. Even my death, says Jesus. So now, these many years later, I actually work as a spiritual director, among other things. And people often will come to me looking for where God is in their lives, trying to figure out what their next faithful steps are. And sometimes they tell some really hard and complicated stories. And at the end of their speaking, I often say words to the effect of, wow, what do you suppose God is up to here? And they looked at me like, were you listening to what I just told you? (laughs) But I'm serious. Now, at my chaplain's gig at the hospital, I I get asked almost every day this question, which is, why is God doing this to me? Or why is God doing this to my loved one? That's not the question you're asking. That's not what I'm asking. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that God does those things. I don't think God gave me a head injury. I think I fell off a cliff. (laughs) Um, What I'm asking people is, what might God be making out of this hard place in your life. And I ask this, I can ask this because I know the Easter story. I know that death becomes resurrection. I know how Good Friday comes out. And I believe in what it says in Romans 8.28, which is that all things work together for good for those who love God. God is always working things together for good And if God can bring back life, even after we've killed Jesus, then God can redeem anything. That doesn't make it go away. That doesn't make those things not happen. God doesn't fix it magically. Instead, God redeems it 
makes things work together for good, goes through it with us, not around or over or under, but through, even if it means going through a tomb. Easter tells us that God is always up to something in the earthquakes of our lives. It's not always easy. It's probably not ever easy, right? But it's good. The line I used to kind of mentally skip over in my brain in the Apostles' Creed that I appreciate now is Jesus went to hell. And I realize how much we need that in the earthquakes of our lives. Is they don't get magically disappeared. They don't get magically erased. But Jesus is there with us in our earthquakes, in our tremors, in our hells, and transforms it. We don't know all the details of the earthquakes that you've been through. We don't know the tombs you've had to inhabit for too long. We don't know how hard, how much lost, how long that you've all been through. But we do know, because you're human, you've had earthquakes in your lives. Probably more than one. We all do. That's part of the package deal of being a human being on this planet. Resurrection does not eliminate the earthquakes from our lives. It doesn't erase the memories. It doesn't take away the injuries. Even at the very first one. Jesus still died. When he was resurrected, he still had his wounds in his hands and his side. Death was still a reality. But death no longer bound him. Death no longer defined him. It was love that defined him, as it had all his life. New life defined him. And he said we could all share in that same new life. That's the invitation. The same love, the same life can be ours. We don't know the details of your earthquakes. But we do know this. Whatever your life, whoever you are, wherever you live, God has a place for each of you in this world, and the tomb isn't it. No matter what anybody tells you, the tomb is not the place for you, not long term, not forever. God is always up to good in your life. It takes a while sometimes to figure that out, to feel it out, to grow into it. But one way or another, God is always seeking to roll away the stone. And, just for good measure, sits on it. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed.